everybody. So today I wanted to start to talk to you about collage and the approach I take to collage in my work. But before I do that, I just wanted to thank you for all the extra subscribes and likes and comments. Do comment on the video if you're interested or ask questions. I'd be interested to have a dialogue with you. Um, and also, I just wanted to mention as well, is that I have a newsletter that I send out every four to six weeks no overload, but in that I share things that I don't really share that much anywhere else, uh, things about my process, but also new exhibitions, uh, things I've got coming up, uh, and new work particularly, uh, and also uh, my workshops. Uh, and I'm developing an online workshop at the moment, so that's where I will share uh, information about that and sort of timelines and so on. So if you're interested in any of those things, please do subscribe to my newsletter. Um, either um, the details, the link is on uh, the details of this video. Failing that on the main, on my main channel, I've got the details. Uh, alternatively, on my website, lizackleyart.com. Uh, so that's just just in case you were interested. So let's talk a bit about collage then. Um, behind me you see the paintings that, um, if you saw a previous video, uh, where I was actually starting from blank panels and then putting paint on them and using a trowel and so on, that is the same four pieces of work. I've got quite a number of them, not just those four. But what I've now done is added another layer of paint, again, just to really to build up the thickness of paint. And they're ready now for me to start adding collage to. Now, in this video, I'm not necessarily going to start adding collage to those panels yet. But in this video, I wanted to share with you some approaches and thoughts around collage and also uh, some studies that I do as a way of starting to get my mind into thinking about collage. Um, but what I want to do whilst I've got the camera facing this way is just to talk to you about these things. Uh, collage artists are obsessive about storing papers and collecting papers and then you're obviously using papers. Um, but inevitably you end up with papers everywhere. So in my studio I have quite a number of different approaches that I use. Um, but these are a couple that I thought I'd share with you. So um, I, this is a sort of general way of organising the papers really. Nothing too specific, so it's not project based. Uh, this is just literally general drawers. This is a bathroom storage unit, plastic, easy to kind of uh, put in, shove into the corner. It doesn't usually sit here, obviously it sits in the corner. Um, and there's four or five drawers in these things and um, I use it sort of generally sort of things. So I've got my own made papers or mark making papers that I've created, bought papers, pattern papers. Uh, then I've got a drawer that is all tissue papers and, and uh, needlework patterns and uh, napkins, that sort of thing. Then I've got a drawer of all of the text uh, type of material that I collect. So you get the impression it's just a sort of a general uh, way of storing. And then this small, small uh, thing here, you can get sort of stacks of these in three, so they're quite handy. And again, I've got labels, papers, maybe smaller things in these drawers, but you know, it kind of depends really. So that's just to give you an idea of the sort of general storage. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to turn around to my workbench and share with you how I'm starting to think about this project and the, paper, and the approach I'm taking to sorting, organising the papers. And then I'm going to share with you a little bit about how I used I use collage um, to generate studies from the work I've already got as a way of getting my mind into thinking about this subject matter um, and, and, and uh, collage. Okay, so this is the way that I'm starting to organise my landscape project. So this is just a shoebox, if you can see. And all I've done is I've literally collected together all my interesting papers that I want to potentially use in the project somehow or maybe um, and divide them into categories. So at the front I've got a uh, text category which is all sorts of my own handwriting, old vintage books, um, scraffitio, my own mark making and text, my own writing in ink and so on. You just have to be mindful of copyright, uh, so uh, do check uh, whether it's in copyright and if it is that you get permission or use your own uh, work. Um, old maps, uh, which are very old, so they're um, out of copyright, but uh, then I've got some wax resist here and so on. So um, that's a text category. And then I've got a black and white category and I've got sort of rubbings from, from trees and plants 
and things. I've got old magazine, just sort of te um, patterns and lines and things that I'm interested in. Uh, just sort of like the, the just different textures that you can get, all in black and white. Um, some of my own jelly print work, some tish, uh, some uh, napkins and so on. And then it goes into a neutrals category with very neutral colours, but again, uh, jelly prints, um, uh, my uh, papers that I've, I've collected and bought and so on. And then uh, and including um, what I really like these, um, and I use them for lines and so on, is this uh, paper patterns. Um, and then... I'm going on to colour categories, so I've got blues and greens, a mix again of my own mark making, bought uh, uh, papers and gel jelly uh, plate uh, works I've created, including uh, those that I've got uh, that I've used with plants, old uh, bits of plants and, and uh, so on. I think that was done with some umbellifera, as you can see the sort of patterning there. Um, did those um, last year. And so I've got all of these greens and sludgy greens, brighter greens, all uh, my own works. And then uh, it goes into the reds and yellows um, and oranges and so on. Again, similar mix of my own uh, gel pr prints and uh, some mark making and so on. And so you can see all of these uh, different colours going to reds now and, and rusts and, and ending with pinks. And then the last category is just darks, different very dark papers, but again with patterns. And as with all of these collages, the, the, the interest in using collage is to get all of these different patterns and textures and variety in sizes and shapes in the patterns and textures into the work um, and to use that um, to sort of stimulate more interesting compositions and, and works really um, and to get that variety in. So these are just uh, darks. So hopefully that gives you an idea and the idea is by having a more focused uh, book of my uh, uh, box of my uh, really interesting papers that um, makes it for a better collage in my work. So just wanted to show you this. This is a smaller bag of, of collage pieces that's really handy if you're out and about. It's great to keep them all together. Or if you have a small home studio, which I do, and do some smaller works there, then it's just great to, to have uh, have them organised. Because before you know it, you get into such a muddle. And then that doesn't really, I don't find that, that really helps the work. So what I've got is some cardboard, which has just come from a cereal packet. And I found my first piece of collage that I quite like. And um, I'm going to get that stuck down and then I'm going to add collage to it. And this is just a study, so I'm not going to be too precious about it. And in a way, that's the wonderful thing about studies. You don't get too precious because you know that they are studies. Um, and the trick, I suppose, is to think about everything as a study rather than getting too precious. So I managed to find this spatula. I was getting a bit frustrated with uh, using and getting my brushes mixed, mixed up. So I, all I'm doing here is putting gloss medium. I just use gloss medium because I use gloss medium in my paintings um, for sealing between layers and to bring out the colours. So I use that as a glue as well. I probably put a little bit too much on here so it will seep out. But I'll show you the gloss medium actually in case you didn't see that. But this is golden. There are lots of different brands. I sometimes use sea white, but this is a particularly good one. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick that down. If you notice, I've quite uh, purposely got quite a nice torn edge there. And um, I really quite like that. And depending on how you um, tear the paper, that changes the edge of it. And I'll talk about that in a second. So all I'm going to do is tracing paper over and pressing it down and I usually um, on my paintings will use either a bone folder or an old uh, just use credit card or some such but this stiff card works just as well and all I'm doing is pushing out the air bubbles and this is what I would do on the painting it's the same thing but with the painting um, I will just put, put many different pieces of collage on whereas in this one I'm actually creating a bit of a study and I'm not going to be too precious about it. It's not perfect because, you know, you've got some seepage and so on. But it's, it's purely a study. So now what I want to do, and I've pulled out some papers that I might want to use, is I'm going to add more collage and sort of try and do something that is quite different. Um, maybe the pattern is quite different, but thinking of the edgelands in my mind. So, 
actually I really like this sort of the way that's torn um, and this is a different sort of paper so it's a lot thinner with a thicker paper if you if you tear it in one direction towards you then you get more of the white edge showing or if you pull it away you don't get that which is important to recognize because you don't want those sort of hard white edges oftentimes when you're doing your collage so I quite like that I might just sort of try and get, so I'm kind of wanting some text. Hmm, I like that. I, I'm liking these straight edges against the rather frayed edge. And with, with these things, what you're trying to do is you're, you're creating variety in all ways. So it's the variety in those negative shapes. It's the variety in the marks. It's the variety in the patterns. And it's the variety in the edges. And I do quite like that because I do get, and it could even be like a stone effect, that. Um, I might just stick those two down like that and keep it really simple. So I'll get on with doing that anyway. And um, what I would also do is, especially on the paintings, is you need to make sure this stuff is really dry. Um, so I would probably use a hairdryer or let it dry naturally, but not do anything else to it to mess around with it until it's fully dry. space there is trying for the variety so if I'm trying to keep this quick by the way that the um, I am going to be I am developing already an online course which will be all about um, exploring and developing your understanding of the subject matter in my case here it's the Edgelands and I will be doing a live project of my own and then participants will be able to do their own um, alongside it. So that's the uh, intention. So do watch out for that if you're interested. So what um, I'm now going to do is I just need to make sure that's completely dry. And then I'm going to just finish by adding some line work. And you might have noticed there, I found some of this purple ink that I think is the same as that. And I'm probably just going to use a bamboo pen and see if I can connect these pieces in. So, and you, sometimes when you turn them around, they look better. That might look even more interesting. Um, but hopefully you can see how I'm sticking down the, the collage and just how I work with it. So um, I hope that's been helpful. These are just studies that help me explore and understand what it is I'm interested in and understand the subject matter better. So thanks very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and uh, make comments and tell me what you think and what you might like to see. And uh, thanks again. Bye-bye.